Hello everyone. As promised, I'm going to show you how I put mushrooms in jars. Now this system is a very easy system and like I said in one of my last videos, I do uh, keep them uh, in the refrigerator. So I have yet to figure out how to do it where I can leave them as natural as possible and still uh, not use any preservatives. So this system is the easiest way for me and again I'm going to use these beautiful beautiful mushrooms. These are my, let me just take my pan so I can make my life a little easier. These are the beautiful beautiful chicken of the woods that not only are they delicious let me just put it this way. Not only are they delicious, but they are also a medicinal mushroom. Um, they are good for us. It's a mineral. Not only do they taste like chicken, especially when it comes to vegans. Let me just get my brush. Especially when it comes to vegans. I know um, a lot of vegans that just turning vegan miss the texture of meat. And if that's the case, I would say um, find something that's going to take the place of that texture. And now you're going to say, well, why am I even bothering to watch this video? Uh, this is a mushroom that either I can't find or I do not pick mushrooms in the wild. So what good is this video for me? Well, number one, I'm just showing you how to preserve mushrooms and number two if you get a chance i say go out and look for these mushrooms they're really really good and they really have that texture of of meat they have the texture the flavor it's really really incredible so here i am just cutting these up um, now, if you, like you would say to me, I'm never going to get chicken of the woods, you can do this to any mushroom you, you pick, or even if you um, buy a lot of mushrooms and you just don't want to eat them all at one time, you can buy, especially if you get mushrooms on sale, uh, you could buy any type of mushroom and you could actually jar them this way and you can have them for the winter so that's a good way uh, so yeah if you ever find mushrooms on sale you can actually do this with any type of mushroom it doesn't have to be chicken of the woods but if you get a chance these are the mushrooms that you want to pick they're not hard to find in the wild you just have to be able to go there and find them now um, this system is a great system to be able to preserve it's the way my mom used to make it and lucky me I do have that second refrigerator so I'm able to put a lot of mushrooms away for the winter but even if you don't have a lot of space you can still make a couple of jars and you don't have to eat them all at one time you can use it for sandwiches or um, if you're having uh, people over and you want to do like an appetizer you can actually put a couple of these mushrooms maybe with a slice of melon there's so many nice ways like a cantaloupe um, I know that uh, with the Italians you put a slice of prosciutto a cantaloupe some uh, uh, some mozzarella and that was a nice way of starting the meal but because we're vegan we're not gonna we're not going to use the prosciutto so what you could do is actually uh, make some vegan mozzarella so you can slice some of that up. You could put the slice of cantaloupe and to replace the prosciutto you could actually put some of these mushrooms on the on the small plate that you're serving your entree in. So there's many ways making your dish a very pleasant dish when you have people coming over or even if it's just a family. Let it be a birthday. Sorry um, off camera right now let it be a birthday or any other occasion and just you know to have something besides your main meal so it's a nice way to start a meal that would be just really really nice 
So this is a little dry. Now I've had so many of these mushrooms I found, uh, my daughter and I, that we're still consuming them and we're still putting them away. So that's how much I had. So now I'm gonna show you how simple it is to put them in jars. And when I say it's simple, it's simple. And how do you flavor them? Well, that really is up to you. You can do it as if it's a meat, then you can flavor it like a meat, like a chicken, like garlic and maybe some rosemary, or you can simply do it with some other herbs such as parsley. It really is up to you how you want to flavor this. If you want, you can even use cilantro. It's really up to you what herb you prefer. Okay, so now if you're going to use an herb uh, such as like I was saying, if you're going to use an herb like rosemary, you can actually cook your chicken of the wood or any other mushrooms, such as if you've got a uh, special on maybe some uh, oyster mushrooms, uh, you can um, cook your, your mushroom with the rosemary. But if you're going to cook uh, your mushrooms with an herb such as uh, basil or parsley, I would say wait to the very end to add that so you can leave that as fresh as possible put this over to the side and work this way um, I would say uh, you can actually put it at the very end so you get a nice colorful herb in your dish but if you're doing this as a um, to jar the way I'm gonna be doing it I say you can use the rosemary right away but if it's any other herb wait till the very end and this is the way my mom used to do it and it's a very easy way, but again, you need space to put these away, putting them in the fridge. But if you're not going to make a big batch like I'm going to do, I go hunting often for mushrooms. And I've got pochinis, I have corals. So I will be jarring a lot of these mushrooms uh, for the winter, winter dishes. So I do need that second refrigerator because I do a lot of stuff where I freeze extra stuff and so I do have an extra refrigerator. But if you don't, you can still manage to make a couple of jars and let uh, and use them maybe for sandwiches. Or if you want to, you could also invest one of those little apartment refrigerators, those small ones. I know a lot of vegans keep those small refrigerators to uh, keep their vegan cheese, which is another thing you can maybe invest in one day. And uh, so you can make cheese, keep the cheese, keep some of these jars of preserves in there. So investing in one of those little things, they're like derby, they're called derby refrigerators. And it's just a good way to be able to keep some extra food that you make for the winter. Do what the squirrels do. And if you find... If you do go out and find these mushrooms and you find they're drying up a little, uh, not to worry. You could also add some water while you're cooking it. And that's going to make these come back to life really nicely. So I'm going to add some water now. I'm going to start cooking these. Pull this up for a second. Uh, I saved, these are my bean jars and I saved these for purposes such as preserves. They come really handy to have. I always start by adding some oil to the bottom and then as I put my mushrooms in, I will add more oil because you want to make sure that everything is covered. So, um, to this dish, here we go. I'm going to show you. Again, just olive oil. I'm going to use good olive oil to cook because it adds another flavor to it. We're going to put salt. Okay, uh, some salt, and we're going to add some black pepper. It really is how you want to cook your, for you will be any mushroom. If you don't want to put black pepper, don't put black pepper. I'm using, uh, these are called um, Scotch Bonnet. If you like heat. I say go ahead and add some. This one's going to be a hot one. I have to tag that it's going to be a hot one because these scotch bonnets were really, really hot. So garlic. Again, it's going to be just roughly 
roughly chopped and then we're going to cook this up and put them away I'll show you the jar that we opened while well, my daughter opened up because she couldn't resist I told her Erica we have so many fresh ones I have to cook up while that one there she says Ma, I just want the one that you made so she did open up there we go she did open up one of my jars it was a small jar and that's okay that's why we make them right okay so roughly chopped there we go remember it's how you want to preserve these there's another way you could do it where you cook them in vinegar and uh, like a vinegar water and then you toss them in oil and then preserve them in oil but this one there is got no vinegar whatsoever it's going to be only preserved in oil so we're going to start cooking this and then i'm going to show you when i start jarring it meanwhile while this is cooking i'm going to show you my jar there they are they're now they're no longer that bright orange color but the oil picked up that beautiful yellow orange color and if you taste this oil it's just as good as look how beautiful these are just as good as a mushroom oh i got some garlic skin and there is my mushroom you would swear you're eating roasted chicken and that oil do not throw that oil away you're gonna say oh my god what a waste of oil it really isn't you could take this oil and you could use it to cook other foods so it's not a waste but yes when you want to serve it you're going to use just the mushroom itself and this mushroom is delicious if you're making like i said sandwiches you could put just some of these inside your sandwich or if you're making um an entree plate uh, use this to replace the prosciutto what you do is just put some of this in a plate a nice wedge of a nice wedge of melon uh, let it be honeydew or cantaloupe some beautiful uh, vegan bocconcini or mozzarella and that could be a beautiful entree dish if you have people over and instead of the uh, prosciutto you use this delicious delicious mushroom mm. I can't even tell you how good this is really really good so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna preserve some of these and we will use rosemary this one here is rosemary and garlic but like I said if you want you can instead of using rosemary you can use parsley or if you want to use basil use basil you want to do cilantro you could even do cilantro it's really up to you you could even turn this into a curry a curry dish by adding curry to your uh, your mushrooms and then the garlic and then a little bit of cilantro and you use this like I said as a side dish really really good or throw them in sandwiches just take some whatever you're using as a sandwich roasted eggplant whatever you put in your sandwich you're gonna put some of this on top and you're gonna like, die and go to heaven that's how good they are but like I said, it doesn't have to be chicken of the wood, guys. If you can't find these, try oyster mushrooms. You could grow them yourself with a kit. Or what you can do is uh, ask some of your, uh, your grocery stores if they will bring in a case for you. You will pay less if you have them bring in like a lot of mushrooms rather than you going to buy little bits of mushrooms. Or if you find that... Uh, there's a special on some oyster mushrooms or even button mushrooms whatever mushrooms you have it doesn't have to be chicken of the wood you could actually season them cook them up and then put them away in jars and you have them for whenever you need them example you're making a pizza you could take some of these and throw them on top of your uh, pizza and you always have the jar handy so it's a good way to um, to preserve some of your stuff especially for the winter Okay, so I'm going to show you so far, Ooh, a lot of steam. I wish you could smell this, guys. Like I said, if you get a chance to go pick chicken of the woods, it's a must. Look at this. It shreds just like, 
just like chicken meat. It is crazy delicious. I did put extra garlic. I'm going to put a little extra rosemary. Uh, I had it covered with, with a little bit of water, olive oil, some salt. This is not rosemary. Um, compartment, guys. Okay. I'm using dry rosemary only because I'm too lazy right now to go outside and get the fresh one. I'm going to give it a good toss. There's still water at the bottom, as you can tell. But now it's time to get them a little golden. So I'm just going to cook them without the, uh, without the lid on top. And then they're going to be ready to be put in jars. Just check for salt. Could use a little extra salt. And back onto the burner. There we go. And at this point, you just want to... Uh, you don't want to burn them, you just want to cook them down a little, and you're going to see when they're ready. Uh, they're going to turn um, a little darker, a little more golden. Sorry, I'm not able to do this with one hand, but right now we're just cooking some of the water out from the bottom, and just get give it a little color, uh, and then we're going to be ready to jar them. Now, I have a big jar... I also have smaller jars, so if you ever want to give something to a, uh, a little jar to a friend, you can. I save these when I buy the artichokes under oil. In my opinion, um, I prefer the smaller jars. You could even buy small jars like this. I prefer the smaller ones because uh, when you open one, you consume that one jar and then you don't touch it. When you use the bigger jars like this, you're always having to tap it with some oil because you don't want the mushroom exposed to air. Uh, so if I would take some of the mushrooms out, I would tap and add some oil on top. So um, you have to be a little more careful not to let your mushroom spoil this way. But when you get small jars like this, it's just perfect for uh, either a bunch of sandwiches or, like I said, to make plates. And if you need an, an extra jar, you just pull out an extra jar if you have to. But I prefer the smaller jar method better. Okay. Uh, I'm using a sunflower oil. There we go. And I'm going to always add some to the bottom. And then when we add the mushrooms, it's going to be easier... To add extra oil because we're gonna have that oil go right in between all the mushrooms. Perfect. I have enough heat. Remember, you don't have to put the heat if you don't want to. I won't have to tag them hot because my granddaughters are gonna like scream bloody murder. Here we go. My lids are ready. Just going to show you. Now, how much garlic is really up to you? You want it very garlicky, you add more. I end up using two garlic cloves in this. And rosemary, I use the dry. But if you have fresh, you can use fresh. Now, I'm working with chicken of the woods, but if you don't have those and you want to work with oysters, again, use the garlic and then whatever herb you prefer. If you're going to use the parsley, um, then do it at the very end. Um, there's another method I'm going to show you, and I'm not sure when, but uh, where I cook the mushrooms with that vinegar water and then I preserve them in oil. And I'll show you how easy that is. Uh, I also do my eggplant that way. Really good way of doing it. Now, if you can, like I said, uh, ask your local market if they could bring in like a whole bunch of mushrooms. Like I said, it doesn't have to be chicken of the woods. I know a lot of, a lot of you are never going to go into the woods to look for them. Um, but you can, uh, if you like mushrooms, maybe you could go to a place where they sell wholesale where you could buy large amount of mushrooms and then do like a squirrel and put them away for the winter.
And if somebody would walk into my house right now, they would tell me I'm a very bad vegan because it smells like I've got chicken cooking. And I need something to put my pan on because it's super hot. There you go. And that's about it. Yeah, I'm just going to show you. These are pretty much done. And you can see that they got a little darker, but you don't want to overburn them either because then they're going to get too dry. But you do want to cook these mushrooms. And again, if you don't have chicken of the woods, you could do this with button mushrooms. You could do this with any type of um, mushroom that you can buy. Like I said, if you could buy them at a good price. Look at the size of these things. I say buy and preserve them and they pick up all the flavors of the garlic and whatever herb you use so it's really really nice and if you could get some small jars that's even better because this way um, it's easier for you to to put them away number one uh, when you open one you open one and you consume it rather than having to open and close that jar continuously so we want to get that oil all the way to the top and then we want to press that in and by doing this I'm going to have to pull a couple out sorry we want to get all the air bubbles out Too much oil in this one. I'm gonna put that there. Maybe put another piece of meat. Well, I call this meat because it really is like meat. When I say it, I mean it. It's like crazy. Okay, so we're just going to push this aside and do the same thing. To this jar and I like putting them in hot and sealing them while they're hot so I got to do this quickly it also helps with sealing your jar Whoop. try and get a jar with a wider mouth Now notice the color of these mushrooms. They will lose a bit of its color, but that's okay. Because the oil is going to pick up all that beautiful color. And then you can use that oil for anything. You could toss salads with it. Or you could just use it to cook some other dish. I try not to use cellophane. So I use these beautiful, uh, they're like wax sheets that you can wrap sandwiches with. And I just simply take it, put it on top, and pop a lid on top of this. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And pop a lid. baby jar I wish I had a whole bunch I used to but by giving things away I don't have any more left but here they are beautiful beautiful mushrooms and they're all preserved in oil and these will last you over a year two years if they last that long because half the time you end up eating them 
half the time you eat more than you should before the winter comes. So there you go guys, just an easy way to preserve if you have an abundance of mushrooms. You could take it and you could put them in jars, you could give them away to your family. And like I said, it doesn't have to be with chicken of the woods. I know half of you aren't going to go into the woods. Like I said, you could use this in many ways. You can use this in sandwiches. You could, um, if you're making uh, an entree, you could also use some of this instead of using prosciutto, especially if you don't eat any meat. And you would think you're eating chicken. You could take this, throw it on pizza. If you're making pasta, uh, you could do pasta with garlic and oil and throw some mushrooms in your pasta. These are already cooked. You could wait till the last minute to toss them. Simply, simply delicious. So very easy to make, guys. And like I said, I know half of you are not going to be going into the woods to pick chicken of the woods. But you can do this with any, any mushroom that you buy. Uh, and it's just a nice way if you can't consume all the mushrooms you buy and you have them in jars It's just a nice way to have them ready for you. They're already cooked. It's just easier faster Come home from work. You don't have to fuss around with cooking this You can just simply throw this in with some pasta forget the pasta Maybe you want to do some white beans. You could add some of this You don't have to add, add the whole jar in there. You could just add a bit to your meal so there's many things you can do with these uh, with these jars of mushrooms and then I'm gonna show you in another recipe I don't know when how soon um, I'd like to be able to maybe um, uh, hopefully find some oyster mushrooms and if not I am going to uh, maybe just buy some so I can show you it doesn't have to be oyster it could be any kind of mushroom and show you how easy it is this other way that I was taught by my mom. So if you don't have an extra refrigerator, don't make as much as I am making. I make a lot. I want it to last the whole winter or give some out to family. Sometimes I know I've bought a lot of mushrooms and I wasn't able to eat them as fast as I wanted to. So what I did was the ones I couldn't keep up, I just jarred them and I didn't have to worry about them spoiling because once they're in like this, they're not gonna spoil on you. Unless you open, close the jar, put your fingers in it, or, you know, lick your spoon and then go into the jar. You might contaminate the jar. You don't want to do that, of course, right? But it's a great way to preserve your food. And this is how I do my mushrooms. So, again, thank you. And guess what, guys? I'm going to see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.